This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and Forged Irish Stout as of last night. That's an exciting new one. Delighted to be joined here on Zoom. Sam Jones, how are we, sir? I'm good. I'm pleased you're out of bed, Parsons, as you uh, as well, uh, we, was, like, we was talking about times that suited one another and um, you said anything before 10 a.m. is just not on the cards. And I just think it's a bit disgraceful, but it's OK. I remember when I was 14. You know what? This is actually also my day off. I'm doing five days in dub. This will be all the comments like, what? How dare he get a day off? Um, I'm still sat here and speaking to the man and we're delivering the content that you want to watch. How's things? Yeah, good. Not bad, mate. Not bad. I'm, uh, I've had a very good year. Um Good end to the year. We've got um, Cameron Vong again in his third fight next week. Dan Toward makes his professional debut. Um, then we've got Dan Toward again two weeks later on the Josh Kelly card. So he's boxing very quick turnaround. Um, trying to see if I've missed anybody. No, that's the and that, that I think that's that'll be a wrap. Unless unless we can get Jack Catchell on the twenty third of December, sneak him on that card. <laughs> I was just firstly then, when you recap and look at 2023 as a whole for you, uh, obviously making an exciting new venture, happy with how everything's unfolded and played out and sort of now playing yeah. for 24. Yeah, I, honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. Obviously, I'm in a place where I've got a lot of prospects in the... Um, uh, I've got a lot of prospects, so it's, it's a case of building, building back up again. I mean, I would say when I was with S-Jam, I got... We, when I was working with with um, with Adam, we got the fighters to where to, to where they are kind of they're they're pushing for now. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, so now I'm on my own. I'm doing what I'm doing with these fighters, but I'm so happy with this crop of talent. I genuinely believe there isn't a better there's there's not a better young stable than what I've got in the country for sure. Talk a little bit about Cameron Vong. You mentioned he's fighting on that card in Belfast next week. We saw him, a successful performance in Newcastle on the Next Gen show, and then before that made his debut in Sheffield. Been an exciting end to the year for him. Yeah, absolutely, and very active as well. This will be his third fight in three months. Um, you're not coming to uh, Belfast, are you, Parsons? You're I'm not, not uh, Lenahan's on that one. Big Matt, uh, big Matt Lenahan. Um, yes. Looking forward to seeing Matt. Matt's a good guy. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, really looking forward to really looking forward to that because you know what? I'm actually really happy I'm going to that fight because it's an amazing card. I think look at the, the, God, the mate, it's a great card. Yeah, it really is. I think it's um it's one of the best. Like for, I'm not talking about like I'm talking about the the level of fights that there, there, there's a lot of pick em fights, isn't there, in there? Like, you were, like a Jarko against Troy Williamson. I can't wait to watch that fight. It's, it's so intriguing to me because I think proper 50-50 fight, um, good clash of styles, um, all the way all the way up, up and down the card, great, great fight. So, yeah, really happy to get Cameron on that show. Well, let's go into the talking point of last week. It was the first time we ever saw Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren on a press conference table together. <laughs> Obviously, Turkey Al Al Sheikh, the person who's sort of putting it up and allowing this to all come off. Um, a week on reflecting, they weren't jibing, they weren't digging at each other, maybe like we expected. What, what do you make of it all just on that side before we talk about what fights they're putting up? I don't know because, like, part of you, right? Part of you, like, wanted them to kind of have a go at each other on the table. Like, it's great that, that this is what should have happened years ago. They both should have come together way before um, this, way, way before this, and done good business together. I think George Warren's played a key role in this as well because he's kind of been the the mediator and he's done work with Matchrooms, like, subtly, and then now he, I think he brought them both in a room. But ultimately, we, we, we wanted them to kind of... Uh, well, I did. I, I'll be honest with you. Like, <laughs> I, yes, yes. Do you know what AJ did with Dev? I, that, that, I wanted to see that. I wanted to. See, I wanted to see. It. I like that. Listen, shout out Dev. I, I think Dev did a really good job, and and, and to be fair, he handled that particular situation really well. But I thought, well done, AJ, keeping it real. What did you he, make <laughs> of that sort of uh, instance there? I, I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny. I think AJ was just kind of was probably seen some of. Uh, uh, Dev's tweets, his, his humorous tweets that he does. Um, 
it, it, towards AJ and he thought, no, fuck you, I'm not, I'm not giving you these, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not responding to you in any way. I don't know, but I was happy with with that. I thought, um, listen, I know Jerome Miller's uh, had had his problems. He really has had his problems, and it's come under a lot of criticism. But he's always good value at a press conference table. Is is um, is Jerome Miller? And I kind of wish AJ was fighting Jerome Miller because I think when everyone watched that, all anyone wanted to see was. AJ against Miller. That's just how that's just how it works. Um, yeah, it's uh, it was it was an interesting press conference. It was very interesting. I thought it was. Listen, we didn't get the Eddie and Frank backwards and forwards, but I think it was more they were trying to be respectful of the situation that they were they were both they were both put in. But it can only be good for boxing. It's been years in the making. We finally got Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren at a press conference together. Talking about working, what did Frank say? Like-minded people working together. Brilliant. The fantastic. Great for business. Let's hope that this is the start of things to come and we get the biggest and best fights, definitely in Britain, but in the world as well. Well, before we touch on Fury Usyk, let's talk about that December 23rd card then. We see Anthony Joshua, Otto Wallin, Deontay Wilder against Joseph Parker, which was a little bit random, but sort of get it. Um Daniel Dubois, who once again not saying too much at the press conference table against Jarrell Miller. Then you've got Lyndon Arthur against Dimitri Bivol, Jaya Pataya against Ellis Zorro, Hergovic against Mark Demori, bit random, uh, and then yeah. Frank Sanchez yeah. versus Junior Farr. And then I think there's Arsene back, Mac Madoff versus Ajit Kabayel. Do you know it's, what? I'm very impressed like... with your pronunciation there, Parsons. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You've, you've <laughs> definitely done that three times before we started this interview. <laughs> Hundred percent, you did. What do you make of it? I mean, we've never had. It's, it's a listen. It's a very big so card, much, but it's mad, isn't it? Like how many? It, it's a fantastic card. It's a fantastic card of names. Um, I think AJ against Wallin is the best fight on there for comp- competitiveness. Um, I, I, listen, I'm, unless I'm missing, unless I'm missing one, because I think we have to be truthful. Um. Optea against Zorro. I expect Optea to to win that fight comfortable. And I'm not. I promise. I'm not disrespecting Zorro at all. And I think it's a great opportunity for him. Um, but I just think Optea is the best cruiserweight in the world, like by a mile. I think he's a quite a scary human as well. To be honest, he's ice cold. Bivol against Lyndon Arthur. I'm really happy for Lyndon to get that. He listen. He'll start as a huge underdog. Um, but Bivol's not. The big KO merchant is he? Like he's not. He's a, he's a boxer. He's a boxer, and Lyndon's a good boxer as well. He's got a tremendous jab. So I don't think it's going to be what people expect that fight to be. Um, I'll, I'll be truthful. I believe Bivol's Bivol's the best in that division. So you've got to put Bivol as the favourite. But I would love nothing more than to see Lyndon Arthur upset the apple cart. I mean, look, look what Spider Richards did in that fight. That was a close fight. So you never know, like you, you just never know. Look what Nathan Heaney did to Denzel Bentley the other day. Like you just don't know when there's two men having a fight in the ring with each other. There's always there's always that chance. Parker against Wilder. Um, I I am listen. I would love Joseph Parker to to win that be a fight. Better time than ever to jo- for Joseph to get this fight, right? I think something. Yeah, about listen, great right, uh, Wilder really um, inactive. We, we just we we just know what Wilder is though, don't we? He is not the best technical operator, even though I do think Malik Scott's kind of brought him back and tried to implement some fundamentals into his work. He is what he is, isn't he? He is, he is what he is. He's a filthy knockout artist and and that could turn your lights off in any second. Like Josie Parker could be winning that fight for 10 rounds and then Wilder just turn his lights out. So again, Wilder starts as the favourite, but I find I find the Wallin fight with AJ the most intriguing on the card because I think AJ's definitely been the most stitched up out of on all that card. <laughs> I was going to say, don't you find it a bit mad? Obviously, he's now fighting number two. I thought almost yeah, yeah, I don't, about I, giving you personally to Philip Hergovic. Is that not an easier fight than the Wallin fight? No, I don't know. I, I, I just think, look, everyone's kind of been given not a handy fight, because that's that is that's disrespectful. It's not a handy fight, but Wilder will be a much bigger favorite against Joseph Parker than AJ will be a big favorite against Wallin. Because I think AJ will be the favorite in that fight, but it won't be by a huge distance. Do you understand? Say if if we went to sleep, right, 
on the Saturday uh, late I don't know, Saturday night before the card started. We all woke up and we saw the result that all the fights went with the way we thought. But AJ was the one that was the banana skin. That's if we're all honest, that's the one that we think could be a banana skin. We have to be honest. I think AJ is going to win the fight. So don't clickbait me, Parsons. I think Ben Davison is a perfect choice for AJ. I think uh, with AJ being an overthinker, Lee Wiley doing all his studying of the tapes and stuff, I think that will suit AJ to the to, down to the ground. Great, great decision. But it doesn't change the fact that Wallin is a horrible night's work. He's rough, he's tough, he's a not dirty, but he's close to that on the inside. He does some naughty South things. Poor he puts, as well. puts it southpaw, puts his forearms in. So before I get clickbaited. That's my reasons. I think AJ will win the fight. I do. And I really want him to because I want to see AJ against Wilder. But knowing the uh, boxing, who knows? <laughs> Imagine Wilder Wilder loses, AJ loses. We get Parker against Wallin. I don't know. But let's just hope we, for boxing terms, we get the fight we, we, wanna, we want to, to see. I, I know I've waffled there, but Jarrell Miller against Daniel Dubois. I think Daniel Dubois should win that fight. But... Jarrell Miller, again, for all his critics, he is a he is a tough guy. He comes forward, he throws a lot of punches. We'll see. We'll see what um what's um we'll see what uh, Daniel Dubois can do against uh, Jarrell Miller because he is a large target, a large, very large round target for, for Daniel. So we'll see. A certain man that you mentioned that myself and yourself were tweeting about this weekend was uh, Heaney Chenko. What a performance from the boy, Devin Heaney. Vasini Lomachenko, get it right. What's that? Vasini Lomachenko. I was actually doing the Nathan Heaney, like, improv. It's not Heaney as good as Vasini. It's not as very good as Vasini or Devin Heaney. It's not as good as that, to be honest. But Anyway, right. new British champion. What a performance. <laughs> Ducking and moving his head like we've never seen before. Show back in round seven. I mean, it was just mad, wasn't it? He did, he, he did the, the Shawn Michaels kick up. He took a flipping huge, huge shot on my accumulator. Fair play to him. Honestly, fair, fair, fair play to Nathan Heaney. He boxed out of his skin, deserved his win. And that is what makes boxing. That's what makes people fall in love with boxing when you get stories like that. The guy that is literally not meant to win, because I love it when people say, because I said, I think Denzel Benton's going to chin him. Everyone's like, ah, look at Sam's prediction here. Me. Hey. Show me your betting slip, you lying fuckers. Do you know what I mean? Like, like you, you, you lying bastards. Do you know what I mean? Like, nobody gave Nathan Heaney a prayer there. Frank Warren, nobody did, if they're all honest. Nathan Heaney boxed out of his skin. Denzel Bentley didn't perform his best. That's a fact, because we've seen Denzel perform at his best, and he's he can box at the... He, he he boxed Yanabek, didn't he? Like he's he's uh he's he's done he's performed well. He's boxed at world level. He came up short, but he's a the fringe world level, European level fighter. Nathan Heaney has boxed nowhere near that. Never looked like he could put on a display like he did. You tip your hat to him. You say well done, and I hope he earns a fortune in his next fight and he gets his Stoke City fight. Congratulations, Nathan Heaney. Brilliant. Well said, Sam. And then the big Saudi presser, the next big Saudi presser that happened last week, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk. It is on after yeah. sort of deliberation. Did Tyson want it? Did Usyk want it? Who knows? February is the date. Um, gives them enough time. Fury looked healed, especially visually. Uh, giving it very lemon to Alexander Usyk. Usyk not really, as we know, like back, like taken into it all, not really asked by it all. What do, what do we make of that clash? It, listen, it's Tyson being Tyson, isn't it? Like it's like Usyk's never going to come out in fluent English and start calling Tyson big belly or like it, it's not Usyk's style. He's never been that way. Um, I think Tyson's like people say, oh, he's rattled. He's not. I don't think he's rattled. But like what I've said, I don't think Tyson Fury likes criticism. But who likes criticism? You don't like criticism. I don't like criticism. Nobody likes, enjoys criticism. Do you know what I mean? Like, it depends how we can take it. Like, like Some people, like, it doesn't affect them. But nobody enjoys criticism. Tyson, I don't think, enjoys it, likes it. I, I, I don't think he's... The, the Nganu situation, like, it would have... As I say, just knocked his ego a little bit, and he's coming. There, he's going to be coming in there with a point to prove. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm really looking forward to that fight. Um, 
yeah, I, I still think Tyson's going to win. I do. I think Tyson's going to win the fight. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the fight, Parsons. How does it play out? Obviously, I sort of said, are we going to see a new Tyson Fury in there this time? And they said, look, Tyson making no ex excuses at his last performance. Going to have a, a longer camp, more, I want to say more focus, but none of us really know what happened in, in that first. No, no, and listen, and, and Tyson gets his critics, right? But I think he needs to be commended on the fact that he didn't throw anybody under the bus. He didn't say Sugar Hill was shit. He didn't say poor people around him. didn't say his nutrition was shit. He didn't blame any injuries. He didn't blame anything. He just said, just one of the, basically, he's just one of them things. He, he got the win. Listen, it was it was a, a fight that some people thought went in Garnu's way. Some people said Tyson won. But I think if everyone's honest, it was nobody would have been... It, he, he he got away with one Tyson that night, which listen many fighters have. I put it down to the fact that this is I, I, there's many things that that could have been the case. I'm gonna give Tyson the benefit of the doubt there. I just think he had a bad night, and I think hopefully we see the best of him in that fight. Because listen, if he performs how he did against Engano, there's only one winner in that fight. But I um I would um I would favor Tyson Fury in that fight, and I hope Tyson wins as well because I want to see AJ against Tyson Fury like we all do. Just lastly, sort of on that topic then, a lot of people after uh, Alexander Usyk fought Daniel Dubois said, oh, Usyk beats, uh, sorry, Tyson Fury beats Usyk off the back yeah. of the Agarnu fight. It's what boxing's said, like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like, I will, as I said, I'll compare it before. Imagine you get, like, in, all, it isn't, in no other sport is 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 how boxing is. Like, someone has a, had a bad night, oh, he's useless, or... A knockout artist never knocked out some. Oh, he can't punch. I told you he could never punch because he's always fought shit opposition. He clearly can't punch. That that's just how the boxing world is. It's it's a mad world. It's like it's very, there's there's nothing more sharper and, and like more harsh than than the than the boxing the boxing critics, boxing Twitter being one of them. Unbelievable place. Um, but no, I think Big Tyson will get the job done and. Uh, and then hopefully, hopefully, now His Excellency Turkey Alice Sheikh is involved. We're going to get to see um, the biggest and best fights, especially in the heavyweight division. Sam, finally from me, this week we go to Dublin. Well, you don't, but uh, Katie Taylor versus Chantel Cameron. Chantel Cameron's name first, I should say, actually. The rematch. Uh, Katie walking first for the first time in her career. She's been in wars. She was never given the wrong end of a decision this time or last time out in Dublin she was. How does it go this time round? I will say this first, and I said this the, the other day in an interview because I have to say it. I think Katie Taylor is the greatest female fighter of all time, right? For what she... I, amateurs, how she's carried herself, how she is as a person, um, what she's done for boxing. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not just about what you do in the ring it's about what she has done for women's boxing because I think without her all these female boxers you're seeing earn loads of money now and um earning plenty of money getting the big platforms the headlining cards all of that is not possible without what Katie Taylor has done that's just a fact right but we're moving on to and I have to say that because I don't want to ever look like I'm putting Katie Taylor down because I am not there's nobody I respect more in the female game than Katie Taylor however Chantel Cameron, I always thought had the better of Katie Taylor if they ever if they were to box because of touch. Chantel's bigger, she's stronger, she punches harder. They're facts, right? The last fight, Chantel went in the fight believing she could beat Katie Taylor, right? And she goes into this fight knowing she can beat her, right? And you know, I think one of the judges gave it a draw or it was something, was it a majority decision? ridiculous because I didn't think the fight was close competitive not close um I think Chantel Cameron does an even better job this time I think Katie Taylor comes better but I think Chantel Cameron become comes comes better as well and, and does the job but you never know you can't write anybody off as great as Katie I want Chantel to win she's a friend of mine but you can never write someone off as great as Katie Taylor I hope it's a great fight um, because I think if Katie Taylor was to lose, you never know. It could be the last time she makes a, a ring war, and it's. Uh, I think it's great that she's got the 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 
the the, time, the the chance to come back and do those ring walks in front of all her, her Irish support. I think it's fantastic. Great fight. Really looking forward to it. May the best uh, lady win. And uh, let's go. Well, Samuel, thank you for speaking to us at Boxing Social. Final message. It's been a good year for yourself. Couple more outings. Then we can enjoy Christmas and certainly the armchair arm fans dream of December the 23rd. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Really looking forward to it. Um, hopefully some fight news for Jack Cattrall soon. Uh, working on working on his next fight for... Let me pick end up of that, actually. Yeah, Josh Taylor. Is that the one? Uh, it could be, but it's... Um, but I mean this g- genuinely. I would I would tell you, even off this, I would tell you, there's other options there for Jack that have been mentioned that really get Jack going. So who knows? Who knows what's next? But it's a fan-friendly sport. We want to give the fans what they want to see. And if that is to be uh, Josh Taylor, then it's Josh Taylor. But who knows? Who knows? Does Josh Taylor want to fight Jack? I don't think he'd want to fight Jack, but let's see. Sam Jones, thank you for speaking to us at Boxing Social.